वेलकम व्यूअर्स आई हैव सेलेक्टेड अ वेरी स्पेशल टॉपिक फॉर यू टुडे द टॉपिक इज इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस नाउ यू मे वंडर व्हाट इट इज बट लेट मी टेल यू दैट इट कैन बी ए लाइफ चेंजिंग सेशन फॉर यू डियर स्टूडेंट्स बिकॉज एज आई टेल यू मोर एंड मोर अबाउट दिस टॉपिक यू विल स्टार्ट रियलाइजिंग दैट यस this is the topic which i must go through to become successful in life friends this particular talk by me has been divided into three segments in the first segment we will talk about academic intelligence in the second segment we will discuss emotional intelligence and finally in the last segment we will talk about components of emotional intelligence so friends let us begin the question arises in our mind what is intelligence and when does it begin so friends let me tell you that the academic intelligence begins at fetal stage itself i hope you remember the story of abhimanyu abhimanyu learned how to penetrate chakravyu while still being in the womb of his mother he could not come out of it we all know that because his mother was feeling sleepy and so abhimanyu could not learn that how to come out of it but in the western countries the doctors conduct swimming experiments a baby which is born 1 hour 2 hour ago that infant a baby for him or her they will arrange a swimming experiment they will fill the tub with water will make all the safety arrangements but will put the baby into the water in order to survive using instinct the baby learns to swim so it is said that the learning begins as soon as the baby is 1 hour or 2 hour old but as we know from abhimanyu's story that the learning can take place while the well developed fetus is there now friends moving further it is a scientifically proven fact that there is a genetic influence of parents which is transferred to a child a child inherits 35% of his or her intelligence from both the parents so you should understand that if the child is not able to perform well then 35% is your own contribution so before scolding please keep this fact in mind dear parents this academic intelligence is measured in terms of iq that is intelligence quotient which is very very popular in the western and developed world where iq is measured at different different age age stages different iq tests are there and the standards are also there as far as india is concerned this academic intelligence is measured in terms of academic grade cards where the parent would make an assessment about their child looking at the mark sheet what we call as the grade card the problem is that higher the grade thicker the glasses worn by children and especially you may recall your own school days that those children who were confined to the books only and were not active in any other walk of life we used to call them bookworms or kitabi keeda now this academic intelligence stabilizes around 18 years of age meaning thereby that initially in the first 18 years the physical development takes place while in the subsequent years the academic intelligence increases but not so rapidly as it used to increase in the first 18 years of age so friends this was academic intelligence the measure of which is iq that is intelligence quotient now we move to the next segment and let us now explore 
the world of emotional intelligence. This word emotion, if we remove E, what we are left with? Motion only. Meaning thereby that all the motion in our life is governed by our emotions. And as I told you that this can be a life changing session for all of you dear students. So let us understand what is meant by emotional intelligence and also try to understand what is the difference between academic intelligence on the one hand and emotional intelligence on the other hand. Emotional intelligence, the word emotion is derived from the word immover. That is the spirit that moves us. Like I said that all the motion in our life is governed by our emotions. It was a New York Times journalist by the name of Daniel Goleman who popularized this concept in the year 1989. He came out with a book which was titled EQ Why It Can Matter More Than IQ. Now this book was written based on empirical evidences. He conducted a survey of 500 selected managers of Fortune 500 companies. He got three sets of data for each manager. Number one, their IQ score. Number two, their EQ score. Number three, their leadership performance score. Now what he got was that very surprising results. He found that those managers whose IQ score is high, EQ score is low, their what you call leadership performance was very poor. On the other hand, he found that those managers whose EQ score is high, IQ score is low, their leadership performance is exceedingly good. And finally, he found that those managers whose EQ, IQ, both scores are moderate, they were moderately successful as leaders and managers. And so what final conclusion he drew from this experiment and that he prominently mentioned in the book I mentioned just now, he said that, Daniel Goldman said that, your 80% of your success comes from emotional intelligence. It means that, that if you are successful, then 80% contribution comes from emotional intelligence. While the academic intelligence which constitutes the remaining 20% is also important. Why it is important? Because it is academic intelligence which will get you the job. But finally it is emotional intelligence which will make you successful in those jobs. So friends let me tell you that there have been men, so many movies also made and on this theme of emotional intelligence. Let me recall one movie called Three Idiots. Three Idiots movie was totally based on the theme of emotional intelligence. You may recall there was a classroom scene where the teacher is asking what is machine and then the central character played by Amir Khan, he gives a practical definition. Then there was another uh, what you call bookish fellow who gives the exactly uh, he uh, replicates whatever was clearly mentioned in the book as a definition. And so then this particular scene very effectively tells us the difference between academic intelligence and emotional intelligence. So this question might also be coming to your mind. Let me answer it by saying that academic intelligence provides you with the theoretical knowledge. But it is the emotional intelligence which will give you the practical skills to apply that theoretical knowledge. And you may agree, you will agree with me that it is the practical skills, the practical knowledge, the applied knowledge that is far more important and far more what you can call worthwhile. Moving further, now let us go to the next slide. If you ask me what is EI, so I will tell you that it is the ability to perceive, control and evaluate emotions. If you press me further, that give me a definition, then there is no definition actually because it is not a theoretical subject. What I can tell you is that, that the crux of EI, what is the crux of emotional intelligence? It is how to smartly manage your emotions. It is all about a smart management of your emotions. So that is what is 
emotional intelligence that how smartly I am managing my emotions. Am I allowing my emotions to govern my behavior and action or I am managing my emotions well and applying them to the practical situations and practical problems. Emotionally intelligent persons are known by many other terms also such as practical problem solver, street smart, result oriented. Sometimes we also use the term called jugaad that is jugaadu. So what is that? That jugaad though it's a Hindi term but then it is there in the Oxford Dictionary of English. Jugaad is being innovative in the thing, in the way you are doing things. Now let me give you, let me uh, tell you a story of Mullah Nasruddin. Mullah Nasruddin is a very famous, we can say fictitious character. There are many stories told about him which are available on the net also. And so there it goes that once Mullah ji was going to perform Hajj, riding his own camel. In the middle of the desert, he came across three young persons. They were all weeping. Mullah ji being a compassionate person, he came down from his camel and then he approached them. And he asked them, what's the problem? Then among the three, the one who was the eldest, he said, Mullah ji, we three are real brothers. And our father has died recently. Our wali sahab ka intikal hua hai hal mein. Mullah ji said that this is a very big loss. I really sympathize with you people. Then the middle brother said, Sir, that is not the only problem. The problem is that our father has put a complicated puzzle in the will. And so what to do about it? Then when Mullah ji asked them, tell me what the puzzle is. Younger brother said irritatedly that our father knew very well that we all are very poor in mathematics. Still he put a mathematical puzzle into it. So now, when Mullah ji insisted, brothers told him that our father has left 17 camels and half of them will go to the eldest brother, one third to the middle brother and one upon nine to the youngest brother. Now, one more condition which is mentioned in the will is that we are not allowed to cut camels into pieces. And so we don't know much of mathematics, but we know that 17 is a prime number and hence indivisible. So what to do? Mullah ji also tried to find the solution. He is an intelligent fellow, but he could not get the solution. Then when he looked around, his eyes fell on his own camel. So suddenly he got like lightning this idea. Then he offered to these three brothers that why don't you take my camel? All, of, all three of them denied saying that Mullah ji, you are going to perform Hajj. Preventing you from doing so will be a sin. But when Mullah ji insisted, then Mullah Nasruddin's camel was also added. So originally 17 camels were there. Now with this addition, 17 plus 1, 18 camels have become. Now Mullah ji invited the eldest brother and offered him 18, half of 18, 9 camels to him. Then he invited the middle brother and 1 by th 3 of 18, that is 1 third of 18, 6 camels were offered to the middle brother. Finally, he invited the youngest brother, 18 upon 9, 2 camels were offered to the youngest brother. Now Mullah ji said, you can count 9 to the eldest, 6 to the middle, 2 to the youngest. You have 17 camels of yours. Give me back my camel so that I can go to perform Hajj. So what is that? That is actually emotional intelligence. That is practical problem solving. That is being result oriented. I also say that that is out of the box thinking. That is something that is kind of innovative way of handling, handling situations and problems. So this is another way of looking at things. New way of looking at things. Now, finally we discuss what is emotional intelligence. He has already given Goldman. But then if we look deeper into our own scriptures and ancient uh, religious scriptures, then we find that the essence of long discourse given by Lord Krishna to reluctant Arjun 
at the battlefield of Kurukshetra. That is what is emotional intelligence. Because Arjuna refused to fight the enemy force, saying that they are all my kith and kin. How can I take up weapon against them? And then Lord Krishna gave him a long discourse. And not only him, but the military forces on both sides, they all listened to his famous speech, which is very prominently given in Srimad Bhagavad Gita. There, Lord Krishna talks about the concept of Sthit Pragya. Sthit Pragya means, Sthit means stable, Pragya means Buddhi, that is wisdom. So, stable wisdom, in other words, he has said, that person is emotionally intelligent, who is able to maintain his emotional balance through all kinds of situations in life. Jisko kahe jay mein, parajay mein, laab mein, haani mein, sam mein, visham mein, shub mein, ashub mein, हर प्रकार की परिस्थिति में जो व्यक्ति अपने दिमाग को अपनी बुद्धि को स्थिर रख सके वही इमोशनली इंटेलिजेंट पर्सन है सो दैट इज द एंशियंट इंडियन कंसेप्ट एंड व्हाट डेनियल गोलमैन हैज डन इज टू पुट ओल्ड वाइन इनटू न्यू बॉटल एंड लेबल इट एज इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस नाउ यू माइट बी वंडरिंग दैट वेयर ऑल दिस इज लीडिंग टू बिकॉज़ वी टॉक्ड अबाउट एकेडमिक इंटेलिजेंस we discussed that when does the learning begin we also talked about that 35% of the intelligence of the parents is inherited by a child we discussed that up to 18 years it can stabilize and so friends now we are talking about the concept of emotional intelligence where i told you that emotional intelligence is far more important than the academic intelligence because the success comes largely that is 80% of the contribution in your success is that of emotional intelligence and 20% is that of academic intelligence then i told you that how you can be smartly uh, managing your emotions in order to be emotionally intelligent so let's move further and now we discuss the components of emotional intelligence which will be our last but the longest segment so components of emotional intelligence what are the components of ei number 1 is the self level components number 2 interpersonal level components number 3 group level components now these are the three levels on which the components operate there are a total of five components of emotional intelligence three of them operate at the self level fourth one operates at the interpersonal level and fifth one operates at the group level so let us see what are those components there are three components which are operating at the self level number one is the self awareness number two is self regulation number three is self motivation so friends at the interpersonal level we have the component of empathy and finally at the group level we have the component of social skills so let us discuss one by one these five components first of all what is self awareness self awareness is knowing who am i being aware about yourself this is the beginning of the journey of emotional intelligence you should be able to define yourself not merely describe you should be able to do sort analysis of yourself you should be able to understand your own emotional makeup your own emotional framework what kind of moods and what kind of impulses you are having what are the positive emotions you are having and what are the negative emotions you are having and more importantly what are the impact of those negative emotions on others so let us now discuss self confidence everyone has 
one's own optimum level of self confidence but the point is that that you must do the tight rope walking when it comes to maintaining your that optimum level of self confidence always because if your actual confidence level is higher than optimum level then people will say how arrogant he or she is if it is lower than the optimum level then people will say how ill confident you are you easily perspire something like that friends also we have the sense of humor sense of humor is also a trait a characteristic of emotionally intelligent persons it is easy to laugh at others but are you prepared to laugh at yourself there is a very good word in english for that which is called self deprecating sense of humor so friends then comes lastly the positive attitude that is thoughts become things meaning thereby that jo sochoge wo ho jayega so that is the number one component that is called self awareness second is self regulation what is self regulation and there is a hierarchy involved first you have to become aware about your own emotional framework then only you can think in terms of regulating i am not using the term control because control means to suppress but we don't want to suppress our emotions because what happens if you keep on suppressing your emotions for a long time then what happens then sometimes the volcano may erupt and such in such cases the people may have suicidal tendencies or may uh, resort to any violent measures and all so friends self regulation means discerning negative emotions such as anger jealousy hatred etc so we should not be having the negative emotions if we are having the negative emotions then we should not suppress them but we should be rechannelizing them how you can rechannelize for example if you if you become aware that i become angry very very quickly so that is good that you are self aware but what are you doing about it are you allowing this negative emotion to dominate your behavior and personality no you will have to rechannelize it how because when you become angry then suddenly you are having excess energy you put that excess energy in some other constructive work maybe do some gardening till you perspire and or maybe you divert your mind or you move away from that uh, situation that position or anything so there are many ways you can rechannelize next is managing negative emotions in yourself that is what is the crux of self regulation actually so friends next is self motivation i told you that there are three components of emotional intelligence at self level number 1 was self awareness number 2 self regulation and number 3 self motivation we have discussed first two now let us talk about self motivation self motivation is what that i am motivated from within i don't require any external source to motivate me i am working hard not for money but because i have a sense of loyalty towards my organization i am working even when my boss is not watching so that could be the self motivation so source of motivation may be same but there can be different interpretations of it but let me tell you that unless you are self motivated how can you motivate others so these are the first three components at the self level now let us talk about empathy you will ask me that what is empathy how it is different than sympathy i will tell you that empathy is a degree higher than sympathy because empathy is uh, first thing it operates at the interpersonal level so one to one relationship so earlier at the self level you were trying to understand your own emotional framework now at this stage of interpersonal interactions you are trying to understand the emotional framework of the other person that person with whom you are interacting now handling people according to their emotional framework is empathy in other words we can say that putting yourself in others shoes such empathetic people are very good hr managers they are able to build and retain talents even let me say that every mother in this world is having lot of empathy for their children she knows what they want 
without the children telling her so point is that that empathy is very very important and it makes you very effective and efficient in interpersonal relations so these are the components where that we have discussed at self level 3 then we are we have discussed that number 1 is the what you call the self awareness number 2 is self regulation number 3 is empathy basically we talk about empathy and can understand this concept with the help of one story also a young boy goes to the puppy store and he asks the manager that i want to buy a puppy he says better take your pick anyone for 20 dollars a piece then he asks the store manager what about that puppy which is there in the back of the store he said no 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 that is not for sale but that boy takes the permission goes to the corner of the store where this puppy was there and he asked him why it is so then he said that this is having defective leg so not uh, i am not selling it but the boy goes there in the corner plays with that puppy with the defective leg for some time then decides pick up that puppy in his uh, lap that puppy with the defective leg comes to the uh, this thing counter pays 20 dollars and starts to leave now this store manager becomes very uh, surprised and he asks the boys to boy to come back he comes back to the counter he says that you have selected that one which is not for sale and you could have bargained with me i could have given you this for half the price so why you have acted the way you have acted the boy did not utter single word but then he lifted his trouser and showed he also had a artificial leg this is i would say one of the greatest examples of empathy so friends now finally we come to the fifth and final component that of social skills while first three were operating at the self level the empathy fourth one was operating at the interpersonal level interpersonal means your relationship with your wife with your husband with your boss with your mother father brother sister uh, son daughter and so on one to one but right now here social skill is one to many group level so what happens is that that is socially skilled person must be good at managing relationships must be good at network building must be good at rapport building and he should be a persuasive person because many studies have been done to link emotional intelligence with what you call uh, the uh, emotional intelligence with leadership and so it was found that those uh, managers who are socially skilled they are good leaders also they should have expertise in team building as well so friends let me tell you that if you also want to be emotionally intelligent you can do so easily by practicing on these five components and as many many books and literature tells us that 21 days it takes to form a habit and so if you start practicing on each component for 21 days let us say one month at time then we will have actually the situation where we should be becoming emotionally intelligent person in less than 6 months time so dear viewers in this program we were talking about a very important concept of emotional intelligence i divided it into three segments in the first one we talked about academic intelligence in the second one we discussed emotional intelligence and thirdly last one we basically talked about the components of emotional intelligence and we also understood that how emotional intelligence is playing such a important role in our lives and the great contribution that comes from emotional intelligence for making us successful we discussed those five components which operate three of them operate at the self level that is self awareness self regulation self motivation the fourth one operates at the interpersonal level that is empathy and fifth one that is operating at the group level that is social skills thank you